Housewives of Atlanta content for over six years now, and I've experienced a lot of highs and lows throughout this whole entire process. Yes, I've had some pretty awesome memories, like that time the executive producer of the show recognized me for all of my hard work promoting the show. My favorite blog for the Housewives is Real Housewives of Atlanta Instagram blog. Justin Diego. <laughs> Justin Diego. It's great. Hi, Justin Diego. And the other vlogs, too. The Real Housewives of Atlanta Instagram vlogs are amazing. <laughs> and when I got to work with Candy Burris to promote her new single a while back. And I still can't believe Nicki Minaj actually responds to my DMs just because now she understands my kind of crazy just because everything I post about Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> but nothing prepares you for that awkward moment when one of your favorite housewives Hit you with a cease and desist. <laughs> it's Justin Diego back with another binge ready video. And today, let's talk about how Phaedra Parks shut down my little t shirt business a few years ago and what happened with my Real Housewives of Atlanta fan page that still has me blocked by the Southern Belle herself to this day. Ooh. Is that shade, Phaedra? <laughs> now, before I get into this story time, I would like to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Phaedra Parks, Portia Williams, or anyone else mentioned in these stories. This video is simply meant to share my experience and give some insight on the situation. Hi guys, welcome to a late night edition of my story time. I'm sorry that it took so long for me to get everything together, but this video is a video that I have been waiting to make for like almost four or five years. So <laughs> are y'all ready to get into some things? I wanna see purple hearts in the chat. Hello, hello. There's a lot of you guys here, y'all up so late. Can you guys hear me all right? <laughs> Club binge ready. Hi. All right. Thank you guys for coming. As you can see, the topic of today's video is story time. And we're going to be talking about when Phaedra Parks actually sent me a cease and desist. Can y'all believe it? And so many people for all this time have been asking me, what's your problem with Phaedra? You not a cast member on the show. Well, yes, it's personal. I have personal issues with our favorite Southern Belle. <laughs> All right. So, okay. The first thing that I am going to do is wait a little bit for people to continue to come in. And then I'm going to start talking to you guys about what actually happened. How was this minding my business? Trying to be a cute little Instagram blogger. You know, running a Real Housewives of Atlanta fan page. I was a fan, y'all. I was a Phaedra fan. And then boom, just like that, I was almost going to jail. <laughs> I'm being dramatic. I was, of course, not going to jail. But, you know, we're going to get into some things. 
And I want to say, first of all, shout out to my members. I see y'all are already in here. Shout out to y'all who've really been holding it down. I know this is only my second live video and some of you guys are in here for the very first time and I am really, really excited. Um, and in a few, we are going to be opening up the lines for you guys to call in. Thank you so much for that super chat, Anita. The very first super chat of the night, I so appreciate it. I'm over here sipping on a little bit of vodka because, you know, things might get a little out of hand. <laughs> All right. How are y'all feeling today? Thank you um, for that super chat. <laughs> he said, binge ready at the dark. <laughs> <laughs> binge read the after dark that has a good ring to it shout out to you too <laughs> yes yeah, she did she do have me drinking somebody said dang she got you drinking <laughs> Thank you. I love seeing those purple hearts. Somebody say we need to see we need a free binge worthy t-shirt. I might be able to make that happen one day. I'm just catching up on the comments. All right. All right. We're finna get started. Um, give me just one second to load up my stuff. Thank you guys are um, definitely ready to get into some things. So we've been to get into some things. In 2015, I was doing everything I could to use my platform to elevate the show and really give fans a unique experience. So I decided to create a website called Real Housewives of Atlanta Tea, and I was selling a couple of cute t-shirts, cute mugs, fabulous sweatshirts, and some more cool stuff. Sometimes you just come to the end in a row with people. So nasty. So good. You couldn't tell me nothing. I thought I was doing my thing, even though I probably wasn't ever really turning a profit. I really just wanted to create something for Real Housewives of Atlanta fans because I've never really felt like Bravo sees us or Bravo hears us. And I just don't think that they understand how to appeal to us, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I was probably selling five t-shirts a week, but I was a professional. So it probably looked like I was selling 500 t-shirts. <laughs> and that's when I got that cease and desist from Phaedra. I was so over it. And at the time, I just felt like I was in so much trouble. I just could not believe that she knew I was a fan. She knew I was running a fan page and she never even reached out. She just took legal action. Y'all, I was so crushed, but I refused to go down with that fight. After that email, I tried to work with Phaedra and I tried to get her to like be interested in working with me. And she seemed interested at first and we went back and forth a couple of times, but nothing ever really came of it. I just feel like she, you know, she just wanted to shut me down and she just had no interest in really working with me. And, you know, now looking back, it's really her loss because nobody talks about Fix It Jesus and she's definitely not selling any shirts. In fact, fans are saying that she's shuffling through loose seat cushions for loose change on Cameo because those Bravo checks have come to a screeching halt. Hi, it's Phaedra, your favorite Southern Belle, and I've recently signed up for Cameo. So if you'd like for me to give you a birthday shout out, condolences for your funeral, or maybe just say something shady, go to Cameo right now and check me out. 
Do y'all think Phaedra could have handled this situation different? Or do you think that she was justified in sending me, little old Justin Diego, a cease and desist? And remember, I was a super fan. So yes, that's it, y'all. I was just minding my business, you know, trying to support our housewives, doing what I do as a fan. And Phaedra actually got upset because, you know, she probably thought that I was doing so well. And, you know, it was just really disappointing for me because back then times were different. I was one of the only people kind of doing a fan page the way that I'm doing it or the way that I was doing it. And as you guys can tell, I've always been passionate. Um, nothing has ever been really about me getting rich or making a lot of money. I don't even throw myself in everybody's face. Um, I don't, you know, brown nose and try to be all over everybody's Instagrams and stuff. I really just have always created high quality content so that people will actually care about the show and be excited about the show. And I just felt like there was a different way that Phaedra could have moved. Um, and she just chose to really, you know, just, in my opinion, just be a little malicious. I just felt like it wasn't really that serious. And I just want to know, do you guys feel like, you know, that was a little shady or do you feel like, you know, she had she was well within her rights. You guys feel like I had no business posting her little stuff. And <laughs> I just want to um, I want you guys to join the conversation and let me know how you guys feel. And thank you so much for those super chats. I appreciate it. Y'all don't forget to call in. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good as best as I can after I got that cease and desist. Sis, anybody would be a little shook if when they get something official in the mail. Look, <laughs> I get my taxes back and I'd be like, hold on. Is this, what is this? I'm scared right now. Right. But um, I am a new subscriber, actually. I found you about two weeks ago. And I just want to say that Welcome. I love your content, all that I've seen so far and that you do an amazing job. And Thank you. speaking on sub tonight's subject, I want to say, of course, she was out of line to, to sing you that cease and desist. Everything that Phaedra does typically is out of line. But is it shocking? No, it is not. Phaedra does anything just to be malicious. And like, there's no point behind it. I really feel like not even in her own mind, because there would be no point for her to try to stop a fan from making money or even to like not even work with the fan to make more money if the case, if, if she was really concerned about her pockets being hurt. I feel like you probably said something about her in a video that she didn't like and she was just like, you know what, I'm going to be petty today. Which is why I really don't, under I never understand why people want Phaedra back on the show. Like, yeah, she's funny, she gives good reads, but the things that she does, like, can really hinder someone's life. Well, like, the really thing, the thing is back then I hadn't even, I didn't even have a YouTube. I was just really, you know, creating posts on Instagram back then. So it can't even be that she was upset about a video that I made. Cause I, I really hadn't made any videos. The stuff that I was posting, everybody, all the housewives were reposting they were really excited about what I did. So that's what made it a little bit more of a slap in the face for me. I, I, why, like, yeah, see, but that's that's exactly what I mean. That even furthers my point that she just does a lot of things with no reasoning, with no sound reasoning that any logical human human being can be like, oh, yeah, I see why she would do that. Right. Especially with you saying that they're posting, they're reposting your stuff. That makes absolutely no sense. But Phaedra is toxic. She's always been toxic. And she wants to stop people from climbing up. But as you see, she couldn't hinder your, your shine. Look at you. <laughs> Right. Look at you. Right. Look, I found you two weeks ago and I'm already a member. Get your coin. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm going to try to keep calls quick tonight so that I can get a lot of people through. Yes, I understand. Thank you so much for all your content and for this live tonight because I am drinking and sipping your tea, honey. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Hello. Yes, I can hear you a little bit. Um, uh, let me keep talking. I just want to make sure. Hello. 
Yeah. How's it going? It's pretty good. As far as Kendra knows, I'm not really surprised. She's a malicious person. She's, she's evil in a way. I can't say I can't know her person, but I just, I'm not really surprised. Her character and who she is, that's, that's what she does. Right, I can barely hear you. I'm gonna have to ask you to like maybe get some headphones and then call back in. All right. All right. Hello. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? All right, I'm going to go ahead and post the link one more time, guys. If you are interested in calling in and joining the show, all you have to do is click the link. You don't have to download any special applications. You can do it on your phone. All you have to do is sign in with either your Facebook or your YouTube channel, and you will be able to actually join the call without downloading any other kind of crazy apps. Or you can do it on a tablet or a desktop. All right, well, I'm just gonna take this time to like bring up the actual letter because I, some of you I've seen in the comments are already talking about, why are you talking about this? This is OT. Yes, it's OT, but this is my platform. And I decided to talk about it when I wanted to talk about it. And I feel like we ain't got nothing else to do anyway with Rona V out here in these streets. So this is a perfect time for me to kind of tell my story. And like I said in my intro, I'm not really doing this to like have you guys, you know, hate Phaedra or send any hate. So please don't do that. In fact, that is like the worst thing that you guys can do. All I want you guys to do is to finally understand like little small snippets of, you know, my experience, like making these binge worthy videos and running a popular Real Housewives of Atlanta fan page and know why I move the way I move in case some of y'all are wondering why I treat certain housewives a certain way. <laughs> Hello, straight from the A. Oh, I lost you. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Justin, I just wanna say, first and foremost, I love watching you. You are amazing. Thank you. And I just wanna say, just ignore the bad vibes, you know? Like, mm -hmm. ignore that energy. Keep doing what you do because you entertain us. You know, you're speaking from the heart. Just do what you do. Phaedra is yeah, really messy and miserable. <laughs> well, I, I I'm really, going to keep it real. Yeah, I appreciate it. I really do. Like, you know, of course, I represent Team Turtle and I do, you know, get petty sometimes. But I feel like for the most part, everything that I'm doing is only to really help the show. Right. I hear I hear an echo. So if you have like the YouTube video open, you have to close it. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can also hear myself. Oh, I don't know why. I don't know what to do. This is like my first time on here. <laughs> but no, it's I'm okay. gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it brief. Um I think, you know, you entertain. Um, I do radio myself, so mm -hmm. I understand, you know, you have to entertain, but it's okay to have an opinion. It's okay to right. feel how you feel. You know, we're all human. I think, you know, celebrities, they take that out of context because, you know, they're celebrities and they want to be portrayed in a, in a certain light. But I feel like at the end of the day, you should be able to say what you want to say. Right. right. Yeah, I'm always yeah, able I'm to say what I want to say. I, I think the issue the was issue for, me, for me, you know, you know I just thought just that, thought that it would have made more sense for her to reach out and be like, hey, I'm not sure if you knew this, but I actually have a trademark on Fix It Jesus. So if you could just remove these posts, that's all cool. Your little design is cute, but you can't be, you know, <laughs> stomping on the whole world thing Fix It Jesus, you know, it's not like. You know, she brought it out there, she made it popular, but everyone's saying fix it, Jesus. It's not like, you know, you're trying to take it. And I just think it's so corny, you know, that she's doing it, well, trying to do it the legal way. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just think that, yeah, she should have reached out to you and she should have been able to communicate with you one-to-one, -one, be like, can you take that down? And it wouldn't, you know, been an issue. But everyone's saying fix it, Jesus. So I don't, I don't understand, you know, what the problem is. Right. Well, I appreciate well, you I appreciate calling you in um, and, you know, keeping it, you know, real yes. on the line. Yes. 
<laughs> you have a good and night. Keep doing your thing. The blessed don't beef with the miserable. Remember that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. I'm going to take a few more calls. Hello. Are you ready? It's Don Bond. I can't hear you. Hello, straight from the A. Maybe it's my it's maybe it's my little um computer. Can you guys hear anybody? Can you guys hear me? You can't hear me. Hello? Hey, can you hear me, Justin? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? Hey, hey how's it going? Pretty good. Good, good. Uh, yeah, I never knew this was a, a issue with her. That, that's that's kind of sad, man. She could have reached out to you and uh, y'all could have worked that out and made a whole bunch of money for both of them. Yeah, um, we actually, um, actually, whenever she sent the cease and desist, I actually responded and I let her know, hey, look, you know, it wasn't my intention to, you know, break any rules or to make you feel any kind of way. I'm a huge fan of the show and I just saw it as an opportunity to kind of engage with fans. So I actually volunteered to, you know, give her the designs. We actually went back and forth. I put together a whole proposal um, and she entertained it for a while, but then I'll, then she just quit responding. <laughs> so. See, you, 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 you was in contact with the wrong one. See, Candy would have ate that up. Y'all, <laughs> y'all would have been in seven figures by now. <laughs> right. Hey, what happened to, what happened to Michelle Brown, Nene's publicist? Where did she go? <laughs> Michelle is not Nene's publicist. <laughs> Michelle is a credible <laughs> blogger. I Who love her. I, I love her. To like she, me. She's shady as crap, but I like her. <laughs> hello, oh, hello, here, she go. Oh. here she go. Here she go. I'm not gonna let him read you, Michelle. Hold up. I was already <laughs> talking in the background. I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, the publicist. Don't do me like that. <laughs> I put it down. I put that in the chat earlier. One of his other videos, and then somebody just kept saying, "Oh, I am no one's publicist. I rebuke no. that. No, 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 no." <laughs> I know that's your girl, but hey, look, I so like all nasty, of them. So rude. No. <laughs> oh, there, there we go. Here we go. Now you know they put a. Uh, they had a season. They played season three today on Bravo. What? Yeah. Yeah, really? oh man, you you should have seen uh Phaedra backpedaling off of that uh the dude the baby due date. I laughed so hard when she checked in, they said uh when she checked in, they said uh and when is your due date? She's like, Child, I don't know. <laughs> well, well Phaedra brings the shade. Phaedra, Phaedra, you know, we gotta we gotta say it right. Where is Phaedra? <laughs> I miss her. But I'm gonna be brings, honest. She brings the shade. Yeah, I you know, after that that catastrophe with her candy and, and, and Portia. That left a bad taste in my mouth, but now I think it would be good for her to come back on the show so her and Candy can, you know, finally, because, you know, everybody's done, came back on the show and made up, so I think it's time for her and Candy to come face to face. I'm I'm rooting for her to come back, but I do know that there are certain things that Fedra has done, you know, that, (laughs) I don't know, a lot of people, you know, don't want to forgive her, and it's not just Candy, you know, she's she's crossed Andy What what happened to Andy? Right, oh God, God forbid Andrea get caught. Uh, get crossed. And she's cross binge worthy. Honey. Right. And she's cross Michelle <laughs> ATL yeah. and Brown. Honey. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so Man. much for calling in tonight, PhD and RHOA. That's right. All right, PhD and RHOA. You, okay, where you get that from? <laughs> This girl named Michelle, you know, she, oh, she, she, oh, a real, she, a real, oh, yeah, she, you, you might, oh, okay. yeah, you, yeah, you might know her. She a candy hater too, well, you know, but oh, we all, okay. they love me and they hate me. That's okay. I love my haters. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> it was good talking to y'all. Man. I appreciate you. Good talking all to right. you. Have a good night. All right. Have a good one. Hey, Michelle, how do you feel about this? Oh, TV? hey, Justin, I thought you was hanging me up. No. <laughs> How do you feel about this? Like, okay, team? time to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I want to know what you too. think. Huh. You know, I want to know what you think. Well, I think that someone was trying to stop your bag, and you know, you, you know, your presentation is professional. 
even if you weren't selling but one shirt a month, it don't matter. Um, because she wasn't selling anything. And just, I guess, the fact that she thought you were selling something based on something that she said. Hell, do we even know if she have the trademark? Well, Who yeah, in, in the letter, um, he included it. So I actually looked it up and she actually had it. It's oh, probably okay. expired by now or dead. <laughs> <Not inspired. laughs> but you know here's the thing you know i've been a blogger a mighty long time and so i know that you know cease and desist letters are normally just to scare you mm -hmm. you know what i mean right and a lot of bloggers don't know that but i mean they are uh you know the the, the intro to to um to a lawsuit sometimes but at the end of the day most time they won't lead to a lawsuit because nobody wants to spend money on the lawsuit so it just depends on how you know how big and bad you want to be if you just like okay bump this cease and desist i'm gonna sell my fix it jesus cups and mugs and t-shirts right. and <laughs> and there have been people in the comments and i appreciate everybody you can always say what you want to say um but freddie oh it seems like he feels like i am intentionally saying i had the right to um no. sell her stuff and that is not what i'm saying i didn't say that one time <sighs> Freddie O must be Fedra's publicist this week. I mean, why is he? <laughs> where is he? I want him. I kept telling him to go call into the stream. I thought he would have been on before me. You saw how much trouble I was having getting in the back end. Right. So I just <laughs> want to clarify that my only issue is, you know, and I and obviously, you know, now I have been dreadly and I've sent out cease and desist letters before and I will send them out in the future. But what I would never do is send one to a binge worthy fan who has intentions of, you know, um, helping me or just like dwelling in the fandom. Like, I think that part was ridiculous. Yeah. And the fact that y'all had communications afterwards and she was clearly interested in your talent, but that's a whole nother story. Right. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then the hat that she owned the hashtag of the phrase, like she owns the hashtag too. Right. Can you own the hashtag? Right. And that's another thing. Like now I now, you know, I may or may not be looking into trademark. So I've learned a lot and I know now I didn't technically infringe on her trademark. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Can you because I mean, and this is me telling the story of my own, but someone um tried to do that to me with Black Blog Matters because they own the term Black Blog Matters. And I'm like, what the hell? But I had put a hashtag on a shirt and they tried to stop me from selling that shirt that said hashtag Black Blog Matters. And I'm like, you don't own that hashtag. So even though they got the shirt taken down, you know, for a hot second, it was put back up because at the end of the day, they don't own the hashtag. Right. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. But yeah, have Freddie O'Call. I would love to hear what he I want has him to, to call. say. Oh my goodness, this is great. But anyway, I won't hold your line. I want to hear what the other fans have to say. I'm such a fan of yours and keep doing what you're doing because this is great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hello? Hello? Oh. Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Um, hey, Justin, this is <clears throat> me, King Colton. I know that um, you've seen me before on um, Michelle Brown's channel, on Michelle's channels. Um, I've watched your content since, for like a few years now, and I love your channel. I love your content, um, even though I may not always, you know, agree what you have to say with what you have to say about people on the show. You know, um, mm -hmm. I love your content. Now, um, Portia, Nini, and Phaedra have always been, you know, my favorites. I've loved them forever. And um, <clears throat> what I have to say about <clears throat> this whole thing with you and Phaedra sending you the cease and desist, what Phaedra did was out of line. Even though I love her, I mean, what she did was wrong. I mean, I, even though I like someone, I can call them out when they're wrong. And Phaedra was wrong for what she did. I feel like if she was feeling some kind of way or whatever, she or she or she maybe just wanted to work with you, she should have reached out to you personally and not have tried to take down your business like that legally. Right. So, yeah. So. All right. Well, I appreciate you calling in. I did recognize your username. Um, I see your comments all the time, so I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Um, I can't wait for Real Size Potomac to come back. So. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's all I have to say, Justin, so, bye. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Hello? Hey, Benji. Hey, how's it going? 
I gave you a name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, shout out for to uh, Michelle Brown. This is Dante. Just wanted to chime in tonight on your story. This is very interesting. Um, in looking at the Fix It Jesus um, memorabilia, I don't know how in the world she would have been able to send you something that scared you regarding that phrase because everybody uses it. And not to mention, um, I think Michelle mentioned it, that you use it as a hashtag. And I don't even know if you could really lay claim to a phrase with the hashtag and not to mention a cross. Right. So well, at the time <laughs> I was in my early twenties, I was, you know, not informed. And again, my intentions were to be a fan. So I think that I was so shook because it's just like, oh, like, okay, I see the way, <laughs> you know, people move. So I think that naturally what I wanted to do is to kind of let her know I'm coming in peace. And to me, it wasn't that serious, you know, um, no. and I really didn't want to be associated with it because I'm not that kind of person who would try to infringe on anyone's trademark. I consider myself extremely creative. Um, and, you know, I it, I was inspired by the show, you know? So it was right. just like, now I, I know a little bit more. Now I'm looking into my own trademarks. So now I do know for sure I technically didn't infringe on her trademark. But I will say she did get the, her trademark was for apparel and um, merch. So she did have the right trademark for Fix It Jesus. So she didn't trademark just the name itself. She trademarked for being the only person in the United States that can use it for merch merchandise. merchandise. Well, yeah. that makes total sense. Well, you're a brilliant mind. I just wanted to say that. And um, I do believe she was operating in business. I like Phaedra. Actually, to be honest with you, when she first came to the show, I have to say that Phaedra was just a bit much over the top. I thought that she was being unauthentic and, you know, this is supposed to be a reality show, but I've grown to love her. Um, she's great for the show. She's funny. She's hilarious. Um, but I think this is one of those opportunities that she just kind of went overboard. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> she really didn't have to do that. I mean, she really could have just, like you said, hit you up or sent you an email said, Hey, you may not want to proceed with, uh, you know, merchandising this because it is trademark just to give you a heads up. You right. know what I mean? I mean, right. I think that's just the, that's just the commendable thing to do for anybody that's in business. Right. Um, but I, I guess because she is a lawyer, she, she's the strong arm, arm lawyer that lost every case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she, she's lost everybody's case that was on the show. She's lost a Sheree's Whitfield divorce uh, right. case. She She's lost MC Hammer's case, Bobby Brown. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But right. um, kudos to you for not getting out of character. And um, you've always maintained your same position. So, And I like your creativity. All right. So, Thank you so much. Thanks, I have some more thanks things. Thanks for the show. You're welcome. Y'all, I have some more things to get into. This is only the first topic. So, you know, definitely don't click away because I may or may not have some confessions because I may have, you know, crossed the line myself. <laughs> Hello? Is your mic finally working? It's Don Bine. I still can't hear you. I think we have Freddie O in the green room. Hello? Freddie O? I see that your mic is muted. Freddie O. Okay, there it goes. Can you hear me? Hey, how are you? I'm great. How have you been, man? I've done I've been doing pretty good. That's a blessing, man. We're watching and listening to what y'all got going <laughs> over here. Right. Yeah, okay, so all right, let's start. Where y'all want to start? We're gonna start in the beginning. When I'm you first sent the letter to her. Yes. You start? Okay, so when you first sent her the letter, right? She had already for probably about maybe five months before you sent that out. Well, actually, she sent me the letter. Her turn. Right, but that's that's after you had published mm -hmm. the content on the website, mm -hmm. right? 
in which she paid and hired me to do the same thing that you was doing for free that wasn't going towards her at all. Oh, wait a minute for Fix It Jesus? Yeah, we we um actually had that. If you went to breaking news, that she, can you hear me? Yeah, this is breaking news. Yeah, well, it's not breaking news. If you go to or had gone to any events like the Women's Expo that she was at, or if you even went to her Essence booth, you would have saw that she sold her own T-shirts there and her mugs and her um candles. Mm -hmm. So if you go there, you'll see it. Although she never had it on the website because we never really got anybody that was really decent to create her website. Both her, Sheree, all the girls, and every season, just so everybody knows, they asked the girls and the women to create taglines. Mm -hmm. um, and if you watch the episode, which so I know majority of your fans do, they hear each girl introducing their tag. Right. So, so like, what's your position? Like, what, what do you say? What was my position with? Facebook? Yeah. What's your position with all of this? Like, are you, are do you feel like I was completely in the wrong? Oh yeah. You were 180% wrong. Yeah. 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 Just in business only because you're posting content that deals and relates to real housewives of Atlanta, which means you're using real housewives of Atlanta's fans, mm -hmm. you know, to create your brand. And then you're selling to them back what these women have already created. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, but that's what it, that's I what, get it. I mean, everybody's you new. To be a fan, though. Like the whole point of them. Even yeah, but you can't, having you can't monetize. You can't you can't monetize off of that. You can't make money just because you're a fan. You can't say because, oh, I'm a fan. I can make money. Using actually, actually, I can. Actually, everybody can. The only I, way I don't think that you can. That's just like when people take my images and they post them online, even even though I didn't give you permission or even though I didn't give, you know, all the rest of the fans permission to do that. That doesn't mean and make it right. I just don't choose to sue you. But if I wanted to, I guarantee you I would win and I would win up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If you in any state in this country and you know the actual law of like reposting pictures because you cannot take my images. But we're Even talking about we're talking the, about the. No, 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 I'm, I'm not talking about that either. I'm talking about just brand ability, just period. Like if you all fans and any fans, and that 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 is great. If you're making your own fan T-shirt and you're not selling it, that's fine. But the second you start making money off of what I'm doing, that's when the issue becomes. You know what I mean? Okay, well, yeah, I respect Phaedra for actually trademarking it. Like I said, I, I didn't have right. a problem with her having right. the right or exercising the right. I just right. think that there was a different way to come about it, especially since and it probably was, but prior I to this, this Phaedra had already been in my DMs. Phaedra, has all, Phaedra knew who I was. She interacted Correct. with my page. I sent her your page. I sent her the the, the t-shirt. Oh, oh, I sent all of that. I'm just telling you what happened. I'm so you were the one that was mad. It's not Phaedra. You were mad. mad so what's what? your position, Freddie? What was your position with I don't get it. with Phaedra? <laughs> like it know, wasn't it wasn't any position. I'm publicist? just explaining to y'all what I was. I was explaining to you all what was going on. So you no, I was just trying to figure out, like, and I, you know, I just called in because I just wanted to get my little input. Like, like, what right. is your position? Like, why were you handling those things for Pedro? Because we print the t-shirts. I'm sorry. For those who don't know, I have a t-print, a lot of celebrities' clothing in which we have to, like, work out deals. So it's not okay when people who did not pay because a lot of these celebrities, we have to pay them for the licensing fees and all that kind of stuff. It's not just something that you can just go and do. Oh, because I want to start a business. Oh, because I saw this. Oh, because I thought that was a cute slogan that they said on a TV show. I can start my own T-shirt line using that slogan, using those followers from that platform. So I don't think that ever, you know, and I'm not saying that against him. I'm not even bringing it up. I'm just giving you clarity to what's you know, what was actually going on. And he was not the only one that she sent the cease and desist to. She sent it to probably about like 10, maybe 15 other vendors. So it's not just one where we singled out one. And it wasn't that she was DMing you and she was having full conversation because again, she was, she probably was, but then you might have been talking to Toya, who was her assistant, or you could have been talking to, um, what's my boy's name? I forgot his name. Steven. But it's, it's several people who, Steven. Been talking to yes, yeah, Steve. Right. All right. Well, thank so, you so much for calling in. I kind of <laughs> I get where you're coming from. So everybody, 
you know, I guess I was confused. It sounds like the issue was really with, you know, Freddie O, and he just felt like, you know, no, I had... she never with Freddie O. Freddie O don't have. But you said that... Freddie O that she posts his pictures on your website. Freddie Do o, I you post your pictures? Do I, I post your pictures? Anything all the time. All the time. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like it's not, I'm, sorry, I'm hearing a personal too. issue. Yeah, he's getting a little too out of hand. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing a personal issue. This ain't got this ain't got nothing to do with fixing Jesus, right? This seems like oh, uh, you know somebody was upset that maybe my design was you know better and more marketable. Um, I, I think that's that's what it is, and that's why I came back because I did want you to be railroaded. And no shade to Freddie O, but I understand how some you know a lot of photographers feel a certain kind of way when their images end up places and are transformed into other images, which is fair use and some other things that apply to certain images. But, you know, shoot. Well, I, I, typically, I typically go for the highest resolution image. Um, mm. So that's what I go for. So I'm surprised that he said that I've been using his images because I... Well, a lot of his... Here's the thing with and I don't want to speak out of turn for Freddie O and I, I hate that he's not here but a lot of Freddie O's images are purchased by the shows and the shows have Freddie O's images in them and in turn because those the shows have the images a lot of people use those images which are on the show you know what I'm saying or a publicist from the show may send out certain images from certain events and it turns out that they're Freddie O's images and so there's a lot of you know, again, he was conflating issues, but there's a lot of, you know, in between things that go on, which may land, you know, his image in your hand that has nothing to do with you, quote unquote, stealing his image. But, you know, that's that's a topic for another day. OK, because that was, you know, a little bit, you know. Like, yeah. But, yeah. And I felt like it was more than just fix it, Jesus. So that's why I came back, because at the end of the day, <laughs> hashtag fix it. With the cross, Jesus was not trademark. And if, you know, because you were young and you did not have the funds or the wherewithal to go to an attorney to ask that question, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, which she probably knew that you wouldn't, you would have, you know, gotten a pass for using it the way you were using it. Now, does she have the trademark? You said she does. Okay, mm -hmm. don't use the phrase, yada, yada, yada. That's one thing. But the way you were using it wasn't in violation of said trademark. And, in my and let me say this. The thing that's frustrating about about really, you know, the thing that's sad, I would rather say, the thing that's sad is to me, people should care a little bit about what is the intention, you know? Mm -hmm. And the reality is, you know, there's a lot of people who are uneducated. I was, like I said, I was young. I was in my early twenties. My intention wasn't to say, oh, Phaedra out here making shirts. Let me snatch it up. You know, that wasn't my intention. And I didn't know copyright law. I didn't know intellectual property law. I now have my own intellectual property. So I understand why people. Oh, shoot. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Hello. I can hear you. So I understand why people want to protect it. But I just feel like you can't be so like pressed and upset and just automatically assume that somebody's like, oh, you know, she she did this and let me make all the money. I just think that that's a bit that's a bit much. But anyway, guys, there are other topics that I want to discuss because, you know, a lot of you have seen me kind of hint at the fact that, you know, Phaedra has actually <laughs> blocked me on Instagram. So I want to kind of open up and tell you guys what I did to make her <laughs> really get to that point with me where she felt like I needed to be blocked. Sorry, I'm going to restart it. One second.
One of the funniest things about having my own Real Housewives of Atlanta fan page back in the day was making petty posts and seeing y'all react. But when I made this post on the gram, people just wasn't ready. And the thing is, I had been tipped off about that huge blow up at the Real Housewives of Atlanta season nine reunion when Phaedra was thrown under the bus by Portia and I just could not keep all that tea to myself. I pretty much decided to lock it down when it comes to new friends. What she did to me was something she felt she had to do to get back at Candy. You've got to give me some answers because what I feel is that you use me as a pawn. Portia, I'm sorry. Yes, in hindsight, I can see where this post went a little bit too far, but y'all got to admit, it is funny as with me captioning the post saying, well, it was cute first quarter, but only what you do for Christ will last with the crying laughing face emoji. Hashtag freaking frack is over party. Hashtag freaking frat. Hashtag redemption. Hashtag betrayal. Hashtag low down and dirty. And I had the nerve to say that these homegoing services were being rendered by Willie Watkins. <laughs> And to be clear, those misspellings were on purpose because for some reason back then, I felt like spelling Willie Watkins that way would make it even more clear that I was joking. And I felt like that would make the joke even funnier. Now, the highlight of the post was Candy actually liking it, but some people still didn't believe the tea. Let me know in the chat if you guys think that I went too far with this post. Apparently I did, and Portia blocked me right after it went viral, and Phaedra still has me blocked till this day. These are my confessions. <laughs> so do you guys think that I was too petty for that, or do you guys get my sense of humor? Somebody said they remember this post. <laughs> yes, this post got me blocked by Phaedra and I have been blocked ever since and I have not had any communications and no opportunity to apologize. But I do, I will say that Portia has moved on and forgiven me and unblocked me for this shady post. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna share the link. I'm gonna take some more calls. <laughs> My phone is blowing up, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so back then, you know, pretty much what I was doing is with my fan page, I didn't really always kind of, you know, kiss, but I was always like a little bit edgier and always a little bit funny. Um, and I just felt like when I got that call that, oh, you know, at the reunion, Portia actually spilled the tea that Phaedra was the one who actually told her about the dungeon rumors and everybody was so shook. And I didn't know what to, what to do because obviously I didn't want to be the one to break the news. I wanted everybody to be surprised on part four of the reunion. <laughs> but I just wanted to have some kind of way to, you know, spill the tea and let people know to go ahead and start wrapping up all that love they had for freaking frat. <laughs> But I will say that I actually like Phaedra. Like, I actually, you know, am over all of the, you know, cease and desist mess. You know, I actually think it's time for her to be back on the show. So if you guys want to call and talk to me about this before I wrap it up, go ahead and click that link and we can talk. Hello? Hello? Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, I would have to say, I think we, um, I think your fans get your humor when it comes to these kinds of things. I mean, to be honest with you, I think it was really funny. And um, I think everybody else found it to be very funny. And um, we get your humor. So I think that's why there's a lot of buzz around your videos because the fans out there, the, Real Housewives of Atlanta fans out there, they understand and they get it. So. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that because, again, like, of course I can be petty, but at the end of the day, if I could have people do one thing, I really just want people to laugh, you know, at the end of the day. 
and we, every single video, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing every single video. So I love it. To you. Can you hear me this time? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So you're talking about um, Phaedra and the uh, well, freaking frag and the deceased. <laughs> Freaking like breakfast a, over party. Did you get to see yeah. that video? I did. What do you think about it? I thought the post was funny. I remember it originally. <laughs> he deserved it. Like, <laughs> because <laughs> people forget, like, you know, Phaedra and Portia that season, they were they were getting all the press. Like everybody was like, hashtag freaking frag. And it was really cute. So I remember being so shook, like, wow, everybody think Portia is so dumb, but Portia is so smart. She she flipped that she thing quick. Well. And, yeah, she played her card well. She knew what to do. Oh, get that blame off me. Mm -hmm. I'm still on the show. You lost your job, honey. Right. <laughs> and I said it on my live, um, my last live, and people were kind of feeling some kind of way. But when somebody said like, oh, do I have any concerns about Portia now all of a sudden, you know, not really, you know, trying to fix things with Kenya and really trying to be back as Nini's friend. And I said that I feel like Portia is not loyal to anybody. <laughs> like Portia looks out for Portia. Of course, Portia can never call Cynthia a flip flopper ever again because she was back on Nene's bandwagon oh so quickly. Right. So Portia looks out for Portia. That's all she will ever look out for. She runs to whoever's hot at the moment. Right. If it's not Nene, then it's Tanya. It's whoever is good for her in that instant. Right. And I'm not even saying that, that it's a bad thing. <laughs> it's not. It's survival of the fittest out here. Right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take another call. Do you have anything else you want to chat about before I let you go? I'm team twirl all day. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Bye. All right, bye. Hello? Oh, hi, um, I'm another YouTuber over here um, on the platform. Represent um, YouTubers. Yeah. <laughs> I make astrology content, like Zodiac astrology content on here. Nice. Um, but I am obsessed with Real Housewives of Atlanta. I've been watching that show since I was like in seventh grade, honestly, because you know my elders used to watch it, and then I got drawn and sucked into it. Um, but about Phaedra, I would say because um, the question was about if she should come back in the show, right? Well, not really. It's kind of like um, the first part of the the live tonight, I wanted to know, like, did people feel like I was completely wrong? And obviously some people feel like, you know, I was completely wrong, i.e. Freddie O. Um, and then some people kind of understand, like, by me doing Fix It Jesus, my intentions weren't, you know, bad. And right. it was kind of shady for Phaedra to call the people on me like that. <laughs> and I then, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I just kind of view it in a way that's like, yeah, like, you know, as a brand, and I think you know this too, like, because you have a brand now too, like, sometimes it's like, you know, I get sh where she might have the legal stance right. to do that, but it's like, it's not that deep, sis. You didn't really need to do all that over, especially when you were a fan account too. So clearly you don't mean harm by it. Clearly, you know, you're probably not making like thousands of dollars off of it. Yeah, I made probably a total of two to three hundred dollars profit because the shirts cost like eighteen dollars a ship and I think I was charging people twenty dollars. I okay. was doing it for their fans to make people talk about their show. I know and she didn't even have the idea to make her own damn merch. So clearly this <laughs> Well, she did, but apparently nobody was, you know, like, buy. well, I, I don't want to be shady, but I yeah, learned nobody was buying. You can be shady. I'll be shady <laughs> for you. Nobody was buying the damn merch, girl. Nobody cared. I learned tonight that, you know, um, Forty O is actually the person who got her to send the cease and desist. And I get it. As a creator, I've worked with people before and, you know, the reason why I stopped working for people and with people is because, especially in Atlanta, it's like this very savage mentality. Like everybody feels like they have to be the only one who works with Phaedra or be the only one who works with this person. And I don't really like that. I, th I just think that people should link up with people who's, who's talented. And right. as long as both people have something to contribute and get out of it, 
you know, it's cool. Like I'm not protective of my talent because I know that if something new comes tomorrow, I'll be able to figure out and still like <laughs> be a part of the game. Like, so yeah. Exactly. That's like kind of how I am too. To be honest, I feel like with this YouTube thing, even I'm kind of like in the background. Like I used to be a little bit more involved in the scene and then I was just kind of like, oh, hell no, this shit is too much. Because some people are just, it's like too... Uh, I don't know how to ex explain this without seeming like rude, but like there's, there's too many egos. Like, damn, nobody cares that much. Like, some people are not trying to like use you. People are not trying right. to. I mean, you just have to kind of just learn. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Different types of people. Right, and people will be surprised how many people. And I'm not saying this to to brag or to clout. But y'all would be surprised how many people I turn down working with just because I don't have time to have to fight to prove anything. I don't have time to try to fight against all of these people who would come after me, like, because I'm doing something cool. Like, I don't know. Let me do Ben Dorothy. Let me do my own thing. Period. Exactly. Yeah. And it's better to have your own thing too. Like it's better to build your shit from the ground up and have your own thing than to like get it a faster way because it's like you have your foundation you know what i mean people are going to come to you and then you get <laughs> oh sorry i edit i edit john vine to the the chat finally his mic is working well thank you for calling in um kaylin is that how you say your name um colin yeah but my, you can blame my mom for that <laughs> colin. i'll definitely check out your um channel just send me like a dm on instagram or something um and i'll check out your astrology channel Okay, I definitely will. Thank you so much for having me on. All right, thank you for calling. Bye. Right. It's Don Bine. Finally, your um your mic is working. I see. Finally, everything is coming around, right? <laughs> right. I need somebody <laughs> okay. on my side because I I got roasted. You know, I feel Ooh. very attacked. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna spray everybody who's hating with Lysol. Let's get this coronavirus <laughs> out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just want to say something, and I've been burning to say it the entire life, and I've been having technical difficulties, but this is my opinion on everything um, from the uh, from her sending the cease and desist and from her blocking you. What these girls need to understand is this channel is, if anything, enhancing the brand. So with you doing what you're doing in these videos, and even if it's shady, even if it's, you know, today's topic is, is targeting Phaedra or Kenya, whoever, this is keeping the show relevant. And these girls need to give you your grace. So by them blocking you, it's hella disrespectful, in my opinion, for you to be doing all of this for this show, for whatever reason you're doing it. We're talking, we're talking, everybody's talking about the show. And without this channel, will we be talking about the show after the show? Like there's no other platforms that are talking about this show as much as you. And let me so say, I just, that's the thing. That's why I'm so like offended by kind of what someone said earlier about like, oh, you can't write off the coattails of them because they create this stuff. Are y'all serious? Like everything that I've done, maybe there's a little bit of that, but I feel like I give them way more than I've ever got from them. Y'all have never seen me on Bravo. You've never seen Bravo acknowledge me. You've never seen these housewives really, really acknowledge me. You've never seen me anywhere else. Everything that I have, every view that I have is because of the hard work that I've done. And I'm very aware that I keep people talking about this show. Look at Potomac. Nobody's doing this for Potomac. So nobody's exactly. talking about Potomac. No one's talking about it. No one else is creating videos about this show. Like I don't even watch all of the episodes, but you're, you know, I subscribe to you and I have my notifications on. So if I miss, I missed like five episodes of this season. That's how boring it is right now. And I, I caught up because I see you talking about it. You're the, you're the only reason why I know what the hell is going on on this show. So these girls need to understand that this is a platform. This is this basically needs to be an extension of Bravo right now. Like they need to show you some goddamn respect. <laughs> and I, I've been burning to say this the whole time. It's like, right, how dare Phaedra block you? I appreciate How dare it. you block? Like how, no, yeah, it's serious. Like how dare, I don't care what's going on. Phaedra has no right to block you. Phaedra has no right to send you a cease and desist. And every week, every Sunday, you are talking about these girls. You are bringing in, hell, your YouTube views are bigger than the ratings on the show. 
Let's be real. And I want to clarify, <laughs> I want to clarify really quick and insert this. I am not the only one, guys. I know some people in the comment are saying, you know, that I'm not the only one. I'm not saying I am the sole reason why, you know, people are talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta. But some of the people that y'all are mentioning in the chats are in, have been in my DMs for years trying to get me to mention them and trying to, you know, get me to post for them and all this stuff. So I've been doing this for a long time and I am one of the people contributing to you know this conversation about real housewives of atlanta and what sets me apart is i have stuck with really only real housewives of atlanta everybody else ain't loyal <laughs> and i don't have i have one more thing to say because i don't want to take up too much time i am challenging bravo i'm challenged i know andy you on your um your quarantine bed right now and nini leaks you all candy y'all all been reposting these videos I am challenging you all to get Justin on at least watch what happens live in the upcoming months after this coronavirus is over. I am challenging you all to get him on, watch what happens live ASAP. And that's all I got to say. I appreciate it. That would be really fun. <laughs> and thank you for having me on here. And I love you and keep doing your thing. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. No problem. All right, I'm going to take some more calls. Hello? Hello? I can't hear you. I don't know if your mic is not on. I'm going to try to add one more person. Hello? Hey, how are you doing, Justin? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? How are you? Uh, two nights in a row. This is a really good thing. Um, <laughs> it's really, really good. I, I, I'm going to get to it. First of all, Phaedra is a scam artist. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Angela Stanton these days because she, she, she's sitting out there, uh, you know, uh, helping Trump, you know, uh, manipulate and just uh, create total destruction in the world. But when she was not doing that, uh, she, was a, she was the type of person that exposed Phaedra for all her scam. And like the last caller said, if not you and some uh, other YouTubers, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have a voice. Nobody would know about Fix It Jesus. And as far as um, the thing that they've created outside of Candy having her musical background, nobody heard of these women. They didn't have any type of platform to do anything, especially Nene with those you know T-shirts. For some reason, she's made them a business, a regular Fruit of a Loom T-shirt. Who knows? But hey, you got to do what you got to do. But here's I the thing. Favorite. Here's the thing, Sorry, though. I thought. I think that what this is what from as far as I know, this is the way that the housewives think they feel like they are the ones with the millions of followers. They're the ones who are on television. They're the ones that we're talking about. So they feel like if anybody's going to want to consume content about them, they want it from them. And I don't think that that's true all the time. I think sometimes we don't mind watching like Candy speak on it, or maybe we'll watch Nini's channel. But I think that it's something about feeling like you can be in a safe place that somebody else created to where you can throw a little shade about Candy and still be her fan and not necessarily Necessarily be talking to Candy, and I just think absolutely. But see, you at, at this point, you're an influencer. You're a social media influencer. Look at what you're doing as we speak. You got all these people following you. You, you, you. One of the first people that people have on notifications, and everybody knows the power and you know and black viewing. You know what I'm saying? When we get attached to something, we are there. And and if anything, they strangers should have had respect for you knowing what you were doing. And I think uh, they don't understand that, yeah, you're on the show, but you need influencers because a lot of them are not going to put the time in editing, doing the video, doing the chat, doing all of this to make sure that people are watching, especially when you're in favor of, of people. And we're going to mention our girl Kenya. For, for example, if Kenya were to come back and, and say, oh, you know what, she don't like what you're doing. That to me will be a slap in your face because you and I and other channels ride hard for her. So some people understand that and some people don't. But we, you are you're an influencer. You're not going anywhere. And they think that a lot of times, like like uh, a, um, Michelle was saying, that you're not smart enough to go get a lawyer or go do your own research. Google is a powerful thing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people are their own lawyers and don't even know it. 
because if you spend enough time on the internet, you can know damn near everything a lawyer knows without having to get the, you know, the license. But I said all that to say that she's a fraud. She always has been. She's been exposed. And like the other caller said, she ain't never won no cases. How is she still having an LLC behind her name? You know, she don't win cases. You have to win a certain amount of cases for be, to be credible. And if you're not credible, who's coming to you? And I think the show was just giving her a platform for her facade or her whole, you know, ridiculous cracker jack operation she was calling the law firm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever worry about it because you now you know this has been a lesson for you so that next time this happens, you prepare. So like I said, keep what you're doing. You do a great job and it's just, it's just, it's, it's a great uh, show. And uh, like I said, she, 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 the way, like you said, the way you bob and weave, you, you understand things now. I think right. with Phaedra, she is, she, she, you know, you're a lawyer, but I mean, you know, the, your, your degree or your license is not worth the papers written on because you can't win no cases. You know, all that fast, all that stuff that she do, it's all coming back to haunt her. That's why she can't win. That's why she's not gonna be stuck. I'm gonna say one more thing. As far as as far as she coming back on the show, if she come back on the show, it's gonna be an issue. Because believe it or not, Bravo and Andy, they favor Candy over every last one of them. Why Candy got all the spinoffs? Just like Nene said, I'm not a fan of Nene's, but she was right. Bravo has favoritism towards Candy. That's cool with me. I didn't like that show she did with her family in the in the mound. That was like, what are you doing? And all the ski trip nonsense. But I mean, no, I understand. Was I, I went to her. Uh, I went to Sweet Lounge in Atlanta for the premiere. <laughs> now I ain't never been to OLG because I used to live in Atlanta, but I ain't been there in a minute. They say she got to work on them grits and shrimp or whatever they're doing, but I don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I just call in. Um, I look forward to you calling. It looks like you're going to be calling every live, so I appreciate it. I'm going to try. Yep. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye -bye. Talk to you later. All right, guys. I'm going to say this because I've been paying attention to the comments. Um, I'm not really an entitled person. Um, if I was, I probably would have jumped ship a long time ago. Um, I personally believe that there's a lot of people who have moved forward and you guys have seen them on TV already and all this stuff. And that's their journey. I totally trust my journey. And I know that everything that I'm doing is not in vain. I've learned so much since I created this Instagram page. And all I wanted to do is, you know, make people laugh about Real Housewives of Atlanta. I've gone on to create my own content. I've gone on to create a business to where I don't have a nine to five. I, I work for myself. I've paid attention to everything. I've watched, you know, the way that these shows are produced. I've watched the way that, you know, people communicate with these shows. And I feel like I've done a good job adapting. And I feel like as long as I continue to do what I do, I appreciate everyone who's saying that I need a show and I need to be on Watch What Happens Live. That's the end goal. I have no doubt that any of that's gonna happen. But for right now, I am completely happy doing binge worthy and trust and believe I am absolutely working all the time. And I'm gonna take some more calls. Hello? Hello. Hello. Are you there? Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, shit. I am so sorry. I was looking at the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. It's, I called. I was, I think I was your first caller. I called back because I saw a lot of people in the comments and I was honestly getting annoyed by how they're like, I don't, maybe they're bots or whatever. I don't know, but I'm just getting annoyed by the things that they're saying to you because I feel like whether or not she had a legal right to sing you the cease and desist based on that energy when he was talking and based on the fact that she stopped talking to you afterward to work together, it was just plain jealousy it was jealousy and spite because if it was about money if it was about getting credit if it was about all that good shit i mean, good stuff my apologies i know you don't like swearing if it was about all that good stuff then why not work together with you to make money because the bottom line is 
without these blogs, reality TV shows are nothing. There are a lot of people that do not watch reality TV shows, but watch clips or watch YouTubers or not just or just, like basically that they watch clips, they watch YouTubers, they tweet, they retweet. There are a lot of people that don't even watch the shows. And then sometimes it can be a person's commentary on the show that makes someone goes and watch the show. And so why do you guys think they run to... all over doing like all these press interviews? Why do you think that they're doing um, daily, nightly pop and all of these People Magazine exclusives? It's because this matters. This matters a lot. Why are you, th why, do, first, how about, why, I got you one better. Why do you think these housewives are creating their own YouTube channels? And, uh, oop. Why do you think they are telling you guys to click and subscribe? First off, these, these women already make millions of dollars. You think they need these little thousand dollar checks that YouTube send them? Mm-hmm. It's because no, television is going, promotion. yeah, television yes, is going away and everybody's looking to be, that's why you see Wendy at home, you see Ellen, you see Oprah, you see all of these people doing what we've been doing, all of the YouTubers who've been trying to do this and not really getting recognized, you're seeing their, this is what they're, they're resorting to. So I, I'm, yeah, it's, I'm it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me for people to try to belittle your input not only just your input but bloggers everywhere and especially i just realized that i just now found binge worthy but i have been following that real housewife channel that you've been talking about for a very long time so it's it's very is it, it's really just annoying me to see all these comments it's like not like okay somebody came on on the live stream and they oh they y'all feel like they gave a few shady reads okay great whatever but why are you being shady why are you trying to give me shady reads? Why are you giving me all this energy if it's solely about business? It's because y'all know that I was making, y'all felt like I was making more money. Y'all felt like I was doing more and y'all couldn't do what I was doing. And y'all can't do much without me. And that's the thing that's really sad about my experience in Atlanta. And I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed about the call that you're talking about because I, I didn't know that there were so many people involved in that. I thought it was just like a decision phaging me quickly, but it sounds like somebody else was supposed to be making these fix it Jesus shirts for Phaedra. He saw my shirt, he felt threatened by it, and he wanted to shut me up and silence me. And that's that's kind of sad. I, I think what's even sadder is that Phaedra, a grown ass, oh, I mean, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Phaedra, a grown woman who is a lawyer who has a degree who does all these things allowed someone to get in her ear and essentially manipulate her based on his own motives that's what it sounded like to me yeah because that like sounded like really motives. personal right yeah it, why are you, like when he started getting like real loud and like ugh, like all the extra i was like oh no you hurt her this is this is like at first, I, was I wasn't even doing all like, that. Okay, even with the topic, I'm not doing that. That's not why I'm here. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and you even keep telling people not to bash, not to go and bash Phaedra. So it's like, it could have, like, if it was just about business, if it was just about, I feel like it's more of, I, you can't, I can't do what you're doing. We can't do what you are doing. We need you to stop doing what you are doing. The so maybe we can see what we're doing. And we the craziest can, we can try thing to see is we can do it better. Right. The craziest thing is I am I'm open to you know collaborating. I am I'm open and I see Larry. Hold on, Larry Reed live. You've been saying that he says. Phaedra said, I did not send him a cease and desist, and I do not know who he is. And if I blocked him, it is because he was saying something in my comment section that I didn't like. I, I posted the receipt, y'all. Like, if, if it wasn't her, maybe it was, you know, somebody else. But they spoke on Okay, but camera. I feel like Phaedra is known for lying. So why are you even addressing that? Like, what? What? Okay. Uh, and I never said she had a amnesia girlfriend. You couldn't even remember, remember when your baby was due. Like, we are not... Like there is a literal, there's a literal screenshot that keeps popping up on my phone while I'm talking to you. Like, that makes absolutely no sense for him to even, who why try to defend something that and the man just got on the phone right and, and said it. it 
And I spoke with somebody from her team. That's how I even got to to even explore the idea of working with Phaedra. I spoke to, you know, somebody who, who, you know, I'm not going to say a name, but I spoke to somebody from Phaedra's team. This was a legitimate thing. Yeah, that I just I just really I just really want to say that YouTubers and bloggers and and content creators and Twitter people, whatever they want to call themselves, they are you guys are all needed. And especially when you have been doing it for as long as you have You've been doing it for as long as you have. And there can be a contention of jealousy that can be created, even if you don't make even if you're you are not making as much money as those ladies. The fact that you are able to market yourself in a way that they cannot mean that you will be able to make as much money or probably even more one day that they are not going to be able to do people envy minds. Y'all got to remember that they envy mindsets. And all that I heard on that phone call was a bunch of envy. Yeah. And it's really sad because I don't, I don't move that way. And I, I don't like, if you, if you guys look back on all of my videos, I've never once had a beef with anybody. I don't, disrespect other people's channels i don't respect other disrespect other creators i don't i don't care like i don't i don't i'm not threatened I or mean, intimidated like the fact that to do you, that the fact that you sat there and let him talk and explain his point of view and explain how he saw things says that it says in the fact that you were willing to work with her even after the cease and desist the fact that you were contacting her it says that you come from pure of heart and you're really just trying to make a coin. And if you, I can help you make a coin, you can help me make a coin. We can do that together. But not everyone is like, not like that. And the major has shown to be one of those people that's not like that. And now we see that she has people around her that are of that same mindset of her and that can hinder things. Right. And the thing that I'm the most annoyed with is I feel like now this is about to turn into something that I wasn't even trying to do. Um, cause now that people are in their feelings, I feel like, you know, but, oh, well, I don't feel like I did anything. <laughs> what you just did was just gave her some attention, her dry butt ain't had in a minute. So they should send you another check. Okay. <laughs> cause I bet you people ain't went to her page in a minute. All over there. So. Well, you know, they might be but looking for cameos. All right. Well, thank you for calling in. No, thank you. I just, I just really had to get in here and say that because I'm like, there, like, even beyond the legal stuff, there are, there are like human ways you can handle things. There are ways you can move and act while protecting yourself and still making money. And everything that none of that just sounded right to me, so I had to call in again. But I'm still here and I'm trying to figure out how to become a VIP member. So. I'm about to go finish my drink and go back to this YouTube channel and <laughs> fight with it. All right. All right. Thank you for calling. Have a good night. What I'm posting now is my actual proposal that I did for her. Like, y'all, I'm I I tried to be professional. Like, I this was a, a serious thing for me. Um, and I was never made aware that oh, can't be posting phone numbers. <laughs> I was never made aware that there were people who felt like, you know, I was, you know, infringing upon something they already had. So, um, yeah, so that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, and I'm gonna try to take one last call. Thank you guys so much for hanging in with me. Thank you so much for um, keeping it kind of positive and not getting too crazy um, and take this call. Hello? Hello. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm well, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, of course. Well, you know, it all stems down to money. Let's call it for what it is. You definitely know now, you know, how, you know, branding works. We also know what intellectual property is, right? Mm-hmm. So we know that actually when it all comes down to it, it's the almighty dollar. And a lot of these housewives, they sit back and they have all these people standing in front of them, you know, doing their business. When in actuality, we all know that guess what? It's called show business for a reason. Take care of your business. If you don't know 
you know, from what these other people are saying, well, oh, well, she said she didn't know that she did this to you and blah, 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 blah. How do you not know? This is your business. Right. Take care of your business. Right. I mean, the way that you presented everything and said, hey, you know, you I mean, you came with receipts, you know, and now she needs to read and seat and sit herself down to see. Because I just I, I don't understand it. Again, it's a this is called show business. It's called take care of your business. Right. You know, you can do all those things, you know, and again, yeah. It could have been easy for her to say, hey, yeah, you know what? Let me help this person out. Let, let's do let's try and work together and things like that. I mean, but that sounds too much like right. Yeah. And I feel like what it may have been is maybe initially, you know, what Freddie O said is true. Maybe he was the one who came and spearheaded it. And he's the one who was kind of protecting his investment with, with Phaedra. You know, and I respect 100 percent if they had an agreement. I knew nothing about that. Um, and whenever I reached out to the contact that she gave me to reach out um, to, me me and this person were having back and forth conversations. So I don't know, maybe, you know, it got shut down again and Phaedra was like, okay, well, let me just let it go. But this, I'm glad or I- maybe it, Go ahead. Or maybe, or maybe it wasn't her at all. That's again, possible. like I said, when they have all of these people standing in front of, of you know, the artists and no one is actually paying attention. And then they wonder five years later when they're broke, you know, which has happened to some of the housewives, I'm gonna leave that alone, you know, <laughs> because again, they're not taking care of their business. You know, they out here trying to peddle this and that and woo woo. And it's like, no, no boo, you need to be taking care of your business, plain and simple. You know, uh, uh, someone that I met many, many years ago said, you know what this, you know, show business, you know, it is, uh, 20% show and 80% business. Handle your business. Right. Well, thank you so much for calling in. Um, I'm about to wrap up. It's been a long night, but I definitely appreciate you calling in. Yes. All right. Have a good night. Oh, the pleasure was mine, Justin. <laughs> the pleasure was mine. <laughs> good night, everyone. Bye. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and sticking in. Um, I did post the link one more time if you guys are trying to get in. Now is your final chance. But I feel like it's been a long, um, a long call, and I am, I'm, I'm happy that I did the live. There was some information that came out that I didn't expect, um, and I just hope that everyone understands that my intention was not to hate on Phaedra. My intention was not to cause you guys to go and hate on Phaedra. It's just a story. It's just a part of my experience. I have a lot of stories that have happened to me over the years. And I just think that a lot of people will find them interesting. So I just want to start sharing them. Um, and I'm going to be doing a lot more of that here on my channel. So thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to go ahead and close out. Thanks so much for tuning into this live video with me and making things so fun in the comments tonight. And I definitely want to say thanks again to everyone who called in and got a chance to speak with me tonight. I really had a lot of fun. But before I go, I have to shout out to all of my new members. There is something like really special about someone choosing to pay a monthly fee for your content. And some of y'all are paying more than people are paying for Netflix. Thank you. So I want to see purple hearts before I go in the comment section right now from all of my subscribers and from my members. Go ahead and represent with those emojis that have been reserved just for y'all. Thanks again for watching this video. I will see all of my binge watchers on the next one.